Hi, Alison. I'm so happy to be having this conversation with you today. Um, you're truly one of those inspirational engineers which many of us look up to. And I must admit, I'm curious about your journey and uh, actually your journey to getting where you are today. So maybe tell us a bit about yourself and your, your journey in engineering. <laughs> it's been a long one. But, uh, good morning. Good to see you. And I love talking, so you'll have to slow me down or stop me in a little while. Um, my journey began as a school girl wanting to choose a career. And this was career guidance in the 60s. It was too large. If you taught, uh, if you were good at a subject at school, the teacher told you to teach the subject. If you were not good at the subject, then the career guidance teacher said, do you like people or do you like processes and paperwork? People become a nurse, processes and paperwork become a secretary. That was it. Hmm. So quite, quite limiting, really. <laughs> and I couldn't accept this. I really didn't want to be a teacher. I, want, I knew there was something else. So I searched and I searched, and one day I found a career brochure. It had a picture of a man under a bridge, looking up at it so, with such achievement on his face. He had a hard hat on, and he just looked so happy. And when I read further, this was a happy engineer who just finished building a bridge that he designed, and I thought, that's what I want to be. Hmm. So off I went to university to register as a civil engineering student, and the registrar wouldn't allow me to register because he said girls can't get work as civil engineers it would be irresponsible to allow you to register as a civil engineering student <laughs> so i studied electrical engineering for the first year hated it the electrons did not go my way <laughs> and eventually after after a lot of effort i managed to get into the civil engineering class with the professor assuring the registrar that he would get me my first opportunity. I never went to an interview. He just told me, there's the address. You arrive there on the 4th of January and talk to this gentleman. He's so that's how my career started. <laughs> not, not quite the regular. I know I want to be a civil engineer. I can go and do it from the beginning. It, it took a little bit of a, an effort. But anyway, great. I had a wonderful four years at university. Then the next period was in consulting. Um, and then I wrote software, as most of you all know, and marketed a lot of software. Um, you know of Alicad, of course, and Civil Designer. I didn't write Civil Designer, but they emerged from our, our stable. Um, and, but the last 20 years have been very, very different because in the year 2000, uh, when once I was IC president, I just became aware of this crisis in training and shortage of mid-career people, no training happening, no work for the young people because nobody wants to employ an inexperienced person. So the last 20 years, third career I've had, um, research and training. So that's in a nutshell, is my career. <laughs> and I've got to meet a lot of you because of all the different things, you know, marketing and software for 20 years, of course I've been and training now, I've literally trained thousands of people, so it's actually great. I love it. Mm. And it's changed. Mm. Yeah. So you you've you've played so many different roles within within the industry as well, um, which is great. It shows the the impact that you've had on the on the industry so far. So you've you've joined the industry at a time where there were no women in in, in civil engineering, um, as articulated in your in your story now. So how has the industry evolved over time in terms of the inclusion of women in engineering? What are the what are the gaps um, that still exist, and are there any notable um, improvements? Well, there are definitely improvements. I want to read you something. This is a letter that I got in September 1969. Dear Madam, I acknowledge receipt of your letter and in reply, I regret to have to advise you that this company awards scholarships to male students only. 
Hmm. Now, that's a change, isn't it? You wouldn't get a letter like that today. Or I would hope you wouldn't get a letter like that today. So, hmm. big change. There are lots of women in engineering now. It's absolutely wonderful to see. I do enjoy it. Um, but it's a lesson, this letter, because I didn't let that deter me. I carried on looking. I looked elsewhere. I begged and pleaded. My father was a plumber. He was never going to pay for civil engineering studies in those mm. days. And it's, I've got three bursaries, one for mm. my fees, one for books. And I can't remember what the third one was for. But anyway, the three added up together. And um, I've got three bursaries. Uh, without mm. the, the bursary from somebody who wouldn't support the mail. And again, I have to acknowledge people here, yeah, the company cycle uh, in um, Kamas, they paid for this bursary, or this was the main bursary, and it was fantastic. For years afterwards, they would check on me and make sure I was doing okay, and, and make sure that if there was anything my way, they could help out, but it was never a problem. I actually never had a problem with my food. Mm. So the industry has changed today. Yes, there are a lot of women um, gaps, I guess there's always the issue about do we recognize the need for supporting women for their family roles and so on. Companies are changing. Companies are recognizing this. So I think we just got to keep working. I really do. Mm -hmm. uh, and I mean, they're not even gaps on site. You see young women on site. As a matter of interest, Demai Magubumela started her career. It amazes me as an RE somewhere in the Peru on the N1, you know, imagine a young woman then going in such, to such a remote place and being an RE. So we've actually managed to cover it through this, and I don't think there really gaps as to where we're restricted from working whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and just touching on that, you know, you, you, you that letter for me, it, it, it really paints the picture from a point where somebody would blatantly tell you that, sorry, we do not uh, support women um, in engineering to, to where we are now. I think it really, um, it strikes a chord of, of how far we've come as an industry. Um, you've been involved with, with SICE uh, for, for many years now. And, and um, in order for, for, for the industry to tackle issues around diversity and inclusion, we obviously need a collaborative effort between different bodies and institutions. So what role do you foresee SICE playing in improving um, gender diversity and inclusion in, in, in the civil engineering sector? Look, it's just about discussion, you know, people and awareness. Where there are challenges, we need to, we need to raise them. But we can't just we can't just complain. We can't just be noisy. We actually have to see what the challenges are, make recommendations, uh, you know, and help encourage everybody. It doesn't help to bang the table. It just puts mm. backs up. So, mm. you know, if if you mm. if we are approached by young people, young women particularly, but I also have young men approach me that they've got bottlenecks that they face. Um, but if we approach by young women who are really struggling for various reasons, and it's usually about, I need to get home at half past three or whatever it is, where to down. And my company doesn't understand, and uh, can't you speak to them? Well, it's give and take, you know. So yes, if you need that hour and a half or whatever it is, there's still work. The projects don't stop. The project deadlines don't change because we've got children to deal with. Um, mm. So it's an education on both sides. Companies be flexible. But mums, we still have to get the work done. So we need to take the briefcase home in the evening and, and carry on, you know, if there's work to be done. Mm. It's just those facilitating conversations where people haven't realized that the impact of the way the organization runs affects certain lives. And it's not, mm. as I said, not only young women. I find it all over the show. Uh, you have uh, belief systems. I can't possibly design a brewery if I'm a Muslim. It just goes against all grain. You know, it's those kind of things that one needs to be aware of and, and accommodate. Because there's more than enough work to do. There are more than enough of us. Just recognize each one's needs, but also reciprocate to the company. So... I think it's conversations. I really do. It's conversations. 
open up things in the air, deal with them when they come up, and everybody has some direction and it makes all the difference. So, mm -hmm. so that's what I suggest. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what I see doing, actually. We've had workshops, we've written articles. Um, people know where to phone when they need help. They get advice, uh, you know, and it works, I think, anyway. Mm -hmm. So, Alison, the, the one fact that we, we can't ignore right now is, is working now in the context or, or, or set, setting of uh, COVID-19. What opportunities do you think exist for, for, for innovation during the COVID-19 pandemic? Sure. <laughs> Look, this is, it's created a lot of awareness about a lot of weaknesses and for civil engineers, one of the big ones is, of course, many people don't have access to water or to clean water. And we're saying sanitize, sanitize, wash your hands and so on. And for me, one of the worrying factors is that we're spending a lot of money on temporary measures. So why don't we come up with permanent solutions, you know, rather than just chucking water now and in six months time, we're back to where we were. And, and I think now of what are we as engineers? You know, we, 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 there are four things we do. We investigate problems, we solve them, we implement them, and we take responsibility for it. Mm -hmm. And really, they investigate what are all the problems out there now, and we need to deal with them in a much more sustainable, holistic way. Mm -hmm. And I, I look at the Royal Academy of Engineering in the UK, for instance, they They've done enormous work during COVID on things that need to be addressed. <clears throat> we go back before COVID, but they have something called the Africa Prize, where they ask engineers throughout Africa, young engineers, to come up with their innovations. Um, you submit them for review. The finalists are all helped to commercialize their products. And then the, um, the one who wins, obviously, wins a nice bit of money as well, just to get himself the ground and, and producing. Um, but they've come up with wonderful things, different types of water harvesting equipment, they call the one a water ATM. I find that fascinating. Yeah. Um, it's been a wonderful concept, you know, just got to press the wall and pops, up comes the water. Um, mm. pure, different ways of purifying so that when you go to the river, it's not that ish. If, if we haven't got whole networks in yet, but at least to be able to use the everyday chemicals to be able to get pure water to drink, pumping systems, augmentation. It's amazing mm -hmm. it's, it's to see what these young people have come up with over about the last five or six years. Innovation. So we can innovate. There's no doubt about it. And in COVID, a lot to do with water. Obviously, there's been a lot of development um, in terms of PPE. But the other thing for all of us as engineers, we're learning, we have learned to work more and more with data, big data systems. What are the trends? We've actually got to keep our eyes open for trends and react and respond to them as fast as we can. Because mm -hmm. when anything goes wrong in the world, who are you going to call? Not Ghostbusters. <laughs> <laughs> you call engineers. We got global warming, we're running out of water, all those things, who are you going to call? So if you look at the scope of our work, you look at the challenges we face, everyone has to be addressed by engineers. And, mm -hmm. and, and going through those four steps, investigate what is this new problem? What are the possible solutions? Here it is, now we've worked it out, we've innovated. Uh, let's implement, and of course, we've got to be sure that they're robust and we take responsibility for them. So there are huge opportunities in COVID, but we do need to be um, very resourceful, very innovative. And I, and I really see people all over the show um, coming up with different ideas. Mm. So it's over to you. All, all be challenged. <laughs> yeah, it does take a, a crisis like this to, to, to really inspire engineers to rise and, and, and make a difference. Mm -hmm. Um, mm. Now, a question that I've just, been... Just to think you mentioned, make a difference. Do you know, I'm going back now for my presidential speech. I didn't know what to do in, into the year 2000 because when I studied everybody else's presidential speeches, all they'd done is they'd studied the previous president's speeches and said, this one said so, therefore I said this, you know. I can't do that. 
And um, so I studied the kind of history of engineering as we know it today. And what fascinated me, it was people like Stevenson, Telford, um, Baines. So it was rail, it, it was steam engines, it was rail, um, a road, bridges. Uh, and then when I studied why each of them did it, it was always for a social need. It was always a social or an economic problem that was mm. in place that they had to deal with. For instance, as civil engineers, McAdam, um, mm. he couldn't get his products to the market. He was a farmer in Scotland. And when it rained, and you know, it's always raining there and cold and only a couple of months of the year where it is sunny and his, vehicle, his wheels would get stuck in the mud. So he came up with the tarmac, which we know today. Uh, but that was mm. from Mr. McAdam. And so when I studied it all, for all of them, they were all conscious of social or economic needs. And they actually all funded their own developments, which I found quite interesting. A lot of them became politicians, which is a lesson to us. But every one of them made a difference. Mm. And so eventually my speech always ended with, go make a difference. What's the acronym for that? Go mad. So please remember, <laughs> you've all got to go mad now. Okay. <laughs> you reminded I'll, I'll, me of that. I haven't said that for years. <laughs> I'll, I'll remember to go mad. Um, <laughs> so so then, um, Alison, you've you've um, managed to achieve certain things in in this industry, and and I'm and I'm sure it's due to a variety of reasons. Um, what would you give, what advice would you give a young female engineer that's just starting off her career in, in this industry? <laughs> I'm afraid I'm going to tell you another story. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I served on a committee many years ago trying to work out how to get women into science, engineering and technology. And we mounted a major research. It had three legs. One was uh, web uh, research very widely broadcasted or distributed, asking anybody to comment on what they thought the success of women in science, engineering, and technology, particularly what are the companies doing to help them? What do they need to make, uh, to achieve? So that was an online research campaign. There was another one where teams went and interviewed employers, managers, HR, actually even colleagues. What do you think is necessary to support women in in set, and then they of course interviewed set. So it was three different groups. They interviewed women in set, um, and asked them, you know, what makes you successful, or what do you think standing in your way for those who were not successful. And um, after the whole exercise, so many million rands, which was a lot of money uh, 20 years ago, the only conclusion there were no patterns about what the company did. That, a special formula <laughs> or anything like that. The only pattern was that women were, who were successful were hardy personalities. And mm -hmm. what's a hardy personality? Somebody who's just not phased by anything getting in their way. And I think that's, that's true for everybody. It's not only about women. If mm -hmm. you've decided on a career, you want to achieve something, you just got to follow it. You've got to follow your dreams. The company mm -hmm. are there to support you. They are not there to to deliver your career for you. They're not there to do your work for you. They're not mm -hmm. there to create that. When you create it, you follow it, company support it. Of course, you've got to do it very politely. In fact, um, or Mr. Don McLeod, who was a city engineer of Durban in the 1970s or 80s, he used to say to the young people, you you deal with everybody, but you deal with with them with dignity. And I used to think that was so cute. But just handling everything with dignity, but determination is all you need to do. Make up your mind and just work towards it. Uh, mm. So that's what I'm saying. Just follow your dreams. Work hard. Problem solve. What are the Go four things? Go and investigate. <laughs> solve. Have, make it happen take responsibility and absolutely go mad. You can all go mad. You've all been well-trained. You've had brilliant education. So just use it to go and make a difference in the world and your own career. Mm. That's, That's for me, a mustache. <laughs> 
That's truly really inspirational, um, Alison. Thank you so much for giving us that food for thought. We we certainly have a have a lot to 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 think about and to actually action. Um, any parting comments from your side? Oh no, I think I've given you more than enough. But just go out and enjoy your career. There are such a variety of things you can do. There's so many differences you can make. I love making a difference. And you know, you just need to have a little success. Mm -hmm. And it just is so satisfying that, mm -hmm. you know, you want to do more and you want to do more. So just, just get over any any concerns or preconceptions you have about things being in your way. Just jump over them and go, and do, go mad. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> okay.